Our next panel, titled Outlook and Trends for Japanese Companies in the U.S., was generously put together by our friends at the Japan Business Association of Southern California. In fact, uh, for 104 years, the Japan American Society was based in downtown L.A., and last June, we moved to a new building in Gardena, and it happens to be the same building that JBA is in, and we appreciate their friendship, and we also appreciate the fact they have a lot of committee meetings, and after the committee meetings, their members come up and say hello to us. So our, our, the number of visitors to our office has uh, uh, quadrupled. Uh, here to introduce the next panel's um, moderator is the president of the JBA. He is the Western States Regional Officer and Head of the Los Angeles Office of Mitsui & Company USA. He's also a member of the board of the Japan America Society. Please welcome the President of the Japan Business Association of Southern California, Masumi, or Mark, as he goes by, Mark Moroi. Thank you, Doug. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this symposium. Uh, everybody must be exhausted. Uh, please uh, keep uh, uh, concentrating on the uh, symposium. So as a uh, president of Japan Business Association of Southern California, I'm so pleased to co-host this event uh, with uh, Japan America Society. But uh, frankly speaking, I did nothing. <laughs> so uh, sorry, but sorry, Doug. <laughs> so uh, JBA was established over half a century ago as a Japanese Chamber of Commerce in Southern California. Today, we are comprised of about 500 Japanese companies. Our history is a reflection of the history of many Japanese companies in the United States and of U.S.-Japan economic relations. Since our establishment in 1960, JBA has tried to develop and improve the business environment for Japanese companies in Southern California. We have three major missions. Strengthen its ties with the local community, providing educational support and offering membership services. In Japan, our domestic market is gradually shrinking due to our country's decreasing population. I'm sorry, Japan. I have only one child with my wife. <laughs> On the other hand, U.S. market is growing and the economy is uh, recovering steadily. Under such circumstances, United States is an attractive market, especially for Japanese manufacturers and consumer services providers. Furthermore, Southern California is the one of the uh, largest consumer markets in the United States. It also has a hub of the Pacific Rim, connecting the US, Asia, and Latin America. As Doug introduced me, uh, I'm uh, working for a Japanese trading company as my side job, <laughs> in addition to JBA. And uh, I always stress uh, to my headquarters in Tokyo uh, such a geographic advantage of uh, Los Angeles and uh, Southern California. Southern California is also one of the best overseas region, not only to enjoy such a wonderful weather, even in uh, February, completely different from West Coast and even uh, Japan, but also to start operations for Japanese companies because of the appropriate business infrastructure and a large Japanese community. While TPP is still discussed and negotiated among the countries, including the U.S. Japan, as already mentioned, I'm really honored to host this uh, opportunity to discuss our economic relationship between U.S. And Japan. So please keep enjoying the symposium and I hope you find it useful. Now I'd like to introduce you to the chair and the panelists of the next panel session titled Outlook and Trends for Japanese Companies in the United States. Chairing the panel is Dr. Saori Katada, 
uh, who is an associate professor of uh, international relations at the University of Southern California. She is the author of the well-received book, Cross Regional Trade Agreements. Before joining uh, USG, she served as a researcher at the World Bank in Washington, D.C. Joining Dr. Katada are three distinguished panelists representing companies that are members and strong supporters of both Japan American Society and the Japan Business Association. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce Mr. Yoshimi Inaba, uh, Executive Chairman of uh, Toyota Motor Sales USA. And uh, Mr. Katsuya Takamiya, uh, President and CEO uh, Mitsubishi Electric US. And uh, Mr. Ryuji Watanabe, Vice President and General Manager, Los Angeles Branch, Mitsubishi Corporation, Americas. Now let me ask Dr. Katada to read the panel. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope those who come from the East Coast have some time to enjoy the outside. I don't know, during the break or maybe tomorrow, because it's a gorgeous day. Um, first of all, this, you know, today we have a great treat to have three uh, prominent business executives to talk about what's going on the ground now. Uh, we've heard about the Japanese economy, TPP, the policy environment, and, and so on. But the, these businesses are the ones that are bridging Japan and the United States. So, uh, so I would like to introduce the three speakers, and I would like to uh, ask them to come on to, to the podium uh, one by one for their remarks. First, uh, Mr. Yoshimi Inaba, Executive Chairman of the Toyota Motor Sales USA and Executive Advisor to the Toyota Motor Corporation. He oversees Toyota sales, marketing, and ex uh, external, ex external affairs operations in the United States. After joining the Toyota Motor Corporation in 1968, he had spent, uh, spent uh, sales uh, uh, he has spent more time in sales marketing, both in the European and Japanese uh, business context. He was the TMC's uh, board of directors in, uh, since 1997, and after a series of other s uh, successful leadership roles in the company, he became the executive chairman of Toyota Motor Sales USA in 2013. Mr. Inaba is a graduate of Kyoto University and he holds an MBA from Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management. The second speaker is uh, Mr. Katsuya Ta Ta no, sorry, Takami Takamiya, uh, the chief representative of Mitsubishi Electronic Corporation in the America region and CEO of Mitsubishi Electronic USA Holdings and Mitsubishi uh, Electronic USA since 2010. In his capacity, he oversees the entire business operation in the Western Hemisphere. After joining the uh, Mitsubishi Electronic Corporation in 1979, he worked both in Japan and the United States in the area of marketing. He has also served as the board members of various Mitsubishi member corporations in Tokyo, Taipei, and Shenai. Mr. Takayama is also, uh, also the president of the board of Mitsubishi Electronic Electric America Foundation, foundation which uh, financially supports uh, young people with disabilities. Finally, the third speaker will be Mr. Rick Watanabe. In, he is the vice president and general manager of Mitsubishi Corporation, um, uh, Corporation America's Los Angeles office, which is a New York-based subsidiary company of Mitsubishi Corporation. He joined the Mitsubishi Corporation in Tokyo in 1979 and worked for the US, its US operations for over 20 years, uh, which five of which will be uh, in heading the LA office, which oversees Western region of the United States. Mr. Watanabe is also an uh, active member of many of the local community organizations, including Japanese, uh, Japanese American Cultural Community Center, Japanese American Society of Southern California, and business, uh, Jap Japanese Business Association of Southern California. So I would like to welcome uh, the, uh, Mr. Inaba to the podium for his remark. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Katada, for that kind of introduction. It is a great honor for me to join you and Mr. Takamiya and Mr. Watanabe on this panel. And let me express my appreciation to all of you for coming out today. We are here today to talk about the outlook and trends for Japanese companies here in the US. A wise man once said, prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. <laughs> well, make predictions we must. Like many other Japanese companies doing business here today, we face the same critical decision. Should we keep investing in America or not? Japan is already the second largest source of foreign direct investment in the US today, totaling almost $310 billion. Nowhere is the size and pace of this investment more evident than in the auto industry. Since 2003, Japanese firms have announced more than 12,000 major investment projects in the US. The auto industry accounted for over one-fifth the biggest share. For us as Toyota, the US is our largest and most successful market worldwide. Last year, nearly 30% of the global vehicle sales took place here in America, more than 2.2 million units. And with 14 manufacturing facilities in North America, including 10 in the US, we now produce more than 70% of Toyota, Lexus, and Scion vehicles sold here. Of course, by making our vehicles close to where we sell them, we help insulate ourselves from fluctuations in a foreign currency exchange. But let me be clear, we do not manage our business based on short-term currency fluctuations and we will continue to invest into the US regardless of currency. And that leads me to the current debate over the Trans-Pacific Partnership which is being covered so well here at the symposium. As a global company, we support free trade initiatives, period. Toyota believes a trade pact, which includes Japan, the world's third biggest economy, will promote economic growth, increase jobs, and enhance global competitiveness of US and all TPP members. It is also important to note that at Toyota, we far surpass the local content provisions now proposed for TPP, so it would not be, it not impact our business directly. But we believe that including Japan in TPP is an important issue in the critical relationship between Japan and the US. What matters to us and other Japanese firms considering investment in the US are such factors as American st America's stable government and rule of law, its skilled and motivated workforce, and its strong infrastructure with reliable networks of suppliers, as well as its steady population growth and solid economic improvement. And thanks to huge increase in available American reserves of shale oil and gas, manufacturers like us can count on reasonable and stable energy cost. Additionally, car sales in the US have increased for four straight years. Driving this growth has mainly been the pent up demand for new vehicles as the economy recovered from the recession. But we are now entering a period where the pace of industry growth slows, driven more from broad, broad gains in the economy than pent up demand. So we are predicting another increase in overall US auto sales in 2014, about 2.5% or 16 million vehicles. And 
we expect this trend to continue in the coming years with annual U.S. auto sales again approaching the all-time high of 17 million vehicles in 2005. For Toyota, we see our sales this year increasing to 2.3 million or about 100,000 or 3% 3 more than 2013. And there is more good news for those of us in the car business. Auto loan interest rates are staying low in the 3 to 4% range. And more than 12% of U.S. households are saying that they plan to buy a car this year, and that's a seven-year high. As a result, over the past 26 months, Toyota has announced new investment here of $2.1 billion, which will boost our workforce here by about 4,000 people to 43,000 employees. Investments like these are starting to turn America into a export hub. Last year, we exported more than 130,000 units made in America to 32 countries around the world. We now make cars in places like Kentucky, Indiana, and Texas to sell them in places like Moscow, Sydney, and Seoul. And starting in April, we plan to ship Toyota Corolla made in Mississippi to Latin America and the Caribbean. It's important to remember how many ways the United States greatly benefits from these investments. For example, the U.S. is becoming more competitive thanks to the foreign investment that supports specialized training, advanced manufacturing, and new technologies. In addition, the $27.5 billion we have spent so far with American suppliers over the years has helped create more than 365,000 spin-off jobs beyond 43,000 we now employ directly. And we are proud that when the financial crisis and earthquake in Japan cut manufacturing in the U.S. several years ago, Toyota did not lay off any U.S. manufacturing team members. Instead, we increased training for them and provided opportunities for them to help their communities. Now, we believe that more free trade agreement will help reduce and harmonize manufacturing policies and regulations worldwide to help turn the U.S. into even more of an export hub and support development of new technologies for all companies, including global ones. Just to underscore how vital investments in new technologies will be to our growth in America, I will close with a few words about next year's launch of a hydrogen fuel cell car here in California. Our fuel cell vehicles, or FCVs drive like electric cars, but can be refueled like gasoline power vehicles in just three to five minutes and have a range of over 300 miles. We believe that fuel cell vehicles will be the next game changer in the industry, just like hybrid technology was more than a decade ago. When we launched the Prius, there were many skepticism questioning if this technology could succeed. And I think we have proven hybrids not to be a question mark, but now a benchmark in the industry. In fact, Prius is number one selling car in the state of California. Now, the amazing thing about FCVs is that they generate drive just like regular vehicle, but their only emission are pure water vapor, and they are safe. We even fired 50 caliber bullet into the hydrogen tank. It just left a hole, and the hydrogen leaked out harmlessly. And we battle tested our fuel cell vehicle in deep freeze of Canada, the extreme heat of Death Valley, high up in the Rocky, Rockies, and even over the steep hills 
of San Francisco. In addition, our FCV, uh, FCVs will be cost efficient to operate, and we look to growing economies of scale to help bring down the price even further over time. Of course, we recognize that necessary infrastructure for pumping hydrogen fuel is a problem. But we are confident that through public-private initiatives, such as California Fuel Cell Partnership, the necessary hydrogen fuel infrastructure will be built to make driving FCVs as convenient as any other vehicle. At Toyota, we are committed to this new technology and will continue to take a leadership role along with our fellow stakeholders, other automakers, and government agencies to advance the development of hydrogen stations. So we are excited about the future of CVs here in California and eventually across the country, and we will continue to invest in building a more competitive America that will benefit everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to meet you all. Uh, I feel very uh, nervous after Mr. Inaba's such a <laughs> professional <laughs> address. I need to tell you the reason why I'm here today. One of the reasons is that I am a co-vice chair of the Southern California, <laughs> uh, Japan America Association of Southern California. So this is one of my duties. <laughs> so I'm going to talk. Uh, a brief outline of Mitsubishi Electric's 50-year history here and changes I have seen in the U.S. operations and some challenges for the future. So we opened the first representative office in Chicago back in 1963. So we are a little bit younger than JBA. And 10 years later, uh, we established a sales company in Los Angeles uh, selling audio components and TVs, televisions, and later added office use computers, automotive parts, and small size industrial equipment to our product line. At the same time, or three years later, we uh, started uh, manufacturing of uh, cathode ray tube televisions in Irvine. Then, 80s, 1980s, we added more business, such as Diamond Vision large LCD screens that you can see at Yankee Stadium or AT&T Park in San Francisco, but not in Los Angeles, unfortunately. <laughs> and other business we added are semiconductors, communications, electric power products, elevators, and cell phones. So instead of a sales company handling everything, each business uh, became an independent operation at that time. Then moved to 90s. So we saw polarization in various businesses. So growing and expanding businesses versus downscaling businesses. We were able to grow electric power products, transportation, elevators, factory automation equipment, so-called B2B business. But on the other hand, so we had to scale down or seize the audio, television, cell phone, semiconductor, and some other businesses. So the background on these changes in business direction or product portfolio stems from two elements. The number one is internal elements, such as business or product competitiveness, proper management, and financial and manpower resource allocation. The second one, this is external elements, and such as market environment, so customer needs, competitors, competition, exchange rate, rules and codes and standards. 
We all know that we have to resolve the first one, internal issue, ourselves. But the real challenge was the external issues. So, as you know, that uh, Ch Charles Darwin said it's not the strong, strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. Looking back over our 50, year, 50 years in the U.S., so those businesses that could make the ne necessary market change are surviving and growing today. Speed of the change, as we all know, will be much faster than 10 years ago. We will face many new challenges, such as an aging society, more transnational business or borderless economy, and development of economic partnership frameworks, such as TPP. So to, we believe to continue and succeed uh, in the business in the US, it is absolutely imperative to have the capability and men mental preparedness to properly appreciate the scale and content of business environment changes and quickly respond to the possible changes. Mr. Naba said wise men talk about wise men, but we have to predict the future. <laughs> so there will be many areas that uh, we may need to make changes ourselves, such as business direction, company organization, uh, personal assignment, products, service, and other added values. But among other things, one of the most important parts uh, will be that uh, leader should be prepared to take, and take on the challenges and make necessary challenges on a routine basis. So if you are prepared, you don't have to worry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kazuda-san, and uh, for your kind introduction. And also, I'm very honored to be on the panel with Mr. Inaba and Mr. Takamiya, um, whether or not I can see that, find my good reason why on the panel. Though. <laughs> I'm a uh, resident of Los Angeles. I'm not visiting from uh, snow-covered Washington, D.C., <laughs> or uh, cold Tokyo. So I'm one of the happiest and uh, probably luckiest persons <laughs> in that terms. But this good weather sometimes put me in a very difficult position when I present to management how difficult and how tough, how hard that you know, living in sunny, sunny California. <laughs> and my assertions to uh, understand and the request for the understanding is easily rejected and people don't agree with me. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mitsubishi Corporation is a company I work for. It's uh, uh, called uh, Sogo Shosha in Japan. And it's uh, literally translated into English. It's a general trading company. Um, but, trading, but trading company we are not just in a trading company anymore. And that is my theme uh, for today. As a matter of fact, that in our um, annual report this year, last year, we describe ourselves a global integrated business enterprise. So what is this change or what is this transition? Um, let me go back at the, this, this my personal the history. Uh, as uh, Katada-san uh, uh, briefly presented, that I work uh, in the United States over 20 years. When I first came to uh, United States uh, in 1985, basically I was a salesperson. I my job was to uh, sell 
Japanese industrial products to U.S. customers. So I visited uh, every day to U.S. customers and then literally that them tried to sell the Japanese equipment. Then in 1990s, my job was to make an investment to uh, develop the projects in the U.S. I'm back in uh, USA and now in 2014. My, my responsibility is to oversee and support management of the, our subsidiary and affiliated companies in Southern California. So this is just a brief personal history though, but at the same time, this transition itself is a transition of trading company. Let me go back again for a little bit in the past. After World War II, Japan had made a rapid and perpetual economic growth in 60s, 70s, and 80s. Trading company had grown, a Japanese economy grew. In the days of no email and no internet, we had overseas offices and which linked by telex, remember the word? <laughs> <laughs> telex of its own communication network. So just those two having an office and the, and the telex communication system, those values were impeccable. Yeah, just stepping aside at this, uh, can you imagine it is only a couple of decades ago that email and uh, internet was, were invented? How could we survive without those in those days? We forget. So anyway, those, in those days, the trading company had been the forefront of Japanese companies by exporting industrial products from Japan and e importing the basic materials and energy resources into Japan. The trading company's function was relatively, I think, simple, and involvement with the local community was limited compared with today. Now, there are internet and email. So what are the function and the value of trading company? As uh, Japanese business, businesses have uh, diversified, we have diversified our, ourselves. So trading company now provides three things into market. I'm not Christian, but this is my uh, business version of Trinity. Number one, products, products and materials. Number two, money. And number three, services. The activity related to number one is called trading. The activities related to number two is called investment. And activities related to number three is a solution or know-how provider. So in other words, that in the past, that, you know, we, our basic function is that, you know, trading the commodities and the you know, products and materials, well, that now, but you know, we additionally provide the money and you know, the services, intangible, um, the assets, know-how, software, and so on. So by the combination of those, the trading company creates, develops, and manages the new business in the market. And in this way, that the trading company has closer and stronger relationship in depth with the local businesses, and these businesses give more impact to local economy such as employment. 
So where will the, you know, the trading company go next in the U.S.? Currently, uh, the strength of the U.S. economy is being restored. This U.S. economy recovery will undoubtedly continue to impact the world economy in this dynamic era of 21st century. A trading company continues to find its new value as a part of the U.S. economies, uh, U.S. businesses. The strength of this, uh, the trading company exists in its activities, which cover various business industries and create cross-business synergies. I believe the key is how accurately we can find intelligence of the market and how timely we can provide its solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to hear from our three uh, business uh, executives with their vast experience. Uh, they, uh, we've learned a lot about the transformation of Japanese economy and also the company's efforts and contribution to the uh, U.S. economy and Japanese economy overall, and concrete new steps and the uh, outlook into the future. So uh, using the uh, moderator's per prerogative for, uh, for once, I would like to ask one question to the, uh, to the panelists, uh, if I may. And actually, there was a very similar question uh, contributed by the audience. But I would like to ask a question of uh, what kind of wish list you have to the, uh, the wish list of initiatives that you have, you hope to see from the California's governor's office or leadership in LA to, to further improve the uh, business environment in the, in the Southland. And also there was a question from the audience asking about slightly broader uh, kind of focus with the uh, initiatives by the US government as well as Japanese government in terms of uh, the you know, improvement of the business environment both for the US and Japan. So if you could address those, that would be uh, we would appreciate it very much. May I start? Yes, okay. No, first and <clears throat> foremost, I think uh, United States government and California state allow us to, for us to do business here. That meaning that, you know, I think we are here and we are making a long-term investment. So it's almost like, you know, we are now destined to live here and then stay here. So. Uh, you know, at one point of time, a few years ago, we had a feeling that, okay, they may not want us to be here because of the obvious uh, oil crisis, and all, I mean, a recall crisis time. And we have been through a very tough time. But we are reasonably happy with the way things are handled. And, uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, very important thing is that, okay, U.S.-Japan relationship will ensure us that we can stay here long enough. Uh, more specifically about California, as I stated in my speech, that we are now launching this new technology of uh, fuel cell. And California is a prime state. We are starting with California, so that California government will work with us to building a infrastructure of you know, uh, fuel cell, I mean, hydrogen stations. So these are sort of like uh, two wishes of mine. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so, I have almost the same feeling with Mr. Inaba, and uh, uh, one item on my wish list is that uh, uh, lowering the cost of doing business in California. <laughs> so, as a place to do business, California ranks towards the bottom in this country. So California must be able to compete with other states for private sector investment. So last couple of years, Mitsubishi Electric has invested quite a number of dollars in this country, but was in Georgia, Tennessee, and Ohio. 
so not in California, because of the environment. There should be um, many business um, incentives, really, um, such as uh, tax issues or business permits or something like that. But I'd like to uh, say, uh, bring up the uh, um, wish list is today uh, is more uh, communication opportunities or substantial communication opportunities with Japanese the business leaders. And this is, let me explain it a little bit more than what I want to say and why I want to say this is. There are a, uh, this is a fact, there is a fact that there are 700 Japanese companies in Southern California. And those companies create 120,000 employees. And these numbers are far more than other Asian countries create. And this is actually is quoted by General Counsel of Japan in Los Angeles, Mr. Jim Nini, as he, uh, um, any time, any opportunity that he has, in, he quote the number. But surprisingly enough, that people do not know about this fact. And how they don't know simply that you know, how much that positive impact the Japanese, the business give in Southern California. So I think that you know, before we talk about, well, maybe separately from that, some specific request about you know, the wish list, I think that then there is some basic fact finding or business, I mean, uh, the, the basic, the, the, the data or the facts that we need to make, continue to make an input as well as at the, the, the government office need to know. So with this you know, internet days, that people know that you know, it's very easy to understand what the others have, but as a matter of fact, it's only by the communication that the people really understand what it means to them. So that's, I think, that you know, we'd like to ask that how that you know, we can achieve that, even at this, at this point. Thank you very much. Then I would like to take questions from the audience. One of the audiences asking about the to uh, asking the uh, panelists to share with us some of the secret of successes that your businesses has had, especially uh, the automobile industry has had a fair significant growth in the United States market, and uh, for Japan, other Japanese companies, if there are uh, there are kind of nuggets of wisdom and uh, success, uh, kind of secret of success. If you can share with us, that will be uh, very much appreciated. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I probably that you know, repeating what I presented though, but <clears throat> buy, sell, or moving from one uh, the um, from right to left or left to right is not the uh, you know is good enough for the 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 economy as well as the, the, the true success of the, in, the, in the market. So, so I think that our challenge is that how that we can bring that in the true value into the community, which is that the community that can share with the company as well as, of course, that we got the benefit from. So I can tell about one example, and um, we have uh, six operating companies in the U.S. and one of them is uh, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I believe the uh, background of the company's success is that uh, we started as a joint venture with a U.S. company uh, called Westinghouse Electric Corporation. It used to be a giant, big company. So 50-50 percent uh, joint venture was established and we took over 100% uh, share later. But we, uh, the, uh, we had, we were able to retain the people came from Westinghouse. They were so nice, uh, smart people, and they decided to remain with us. And 
mixture of uh, Japanese culture and uh, U.S. Uh, management uh, met uh, very efficiently. And the company, when, when I spent seven years in that company, but when I went to there for the first time, it was 40 people, 40 million uh, sales company. Now they have 700 people and 700 million sales revenue. Uh, <clears throat> Toyota has been in this country uh, 57 years. And we started from nothing to uh, uh, really a substantial uh, uh, company. And I think uh, there are a lot of things about quality and all these. And I mean, everybody, everybody is trying hard. But I think one of the very uh, thing that differentiate us from the rest is how we deal with our partners, suppliers, dealers, and employees. And in my speech, I said that, OK, <clears throat> we have not, we did not lay off. Even our production is cut by 30%, 40%. But that, you know, feeling, you know, to really respect for people, we you know, we take them as a partner. Even the dealers, we have uh, around the world, uh, around the country, 1,500 dealers. And they say that, you know, looking at Toyota, it's a different company because we are in the same family. And then we share the same values, same goal. And we work as a partner or family members. So these are probably one of the uh, uh, things that will set us apart from a traditional way of doing business. Thank you very much. Uh, kind of a related question about the Japanese company's uh, identity, I guess. The question is asking, do you think you're, you are a global company or American company or Japanese company? Or are you all of those in one? <laughs> Let me start then. I think my definition of globalizing is to use the local talents as, as much as possible. <clears throat> to be very nimble, to be very sort of uh, attentive to local needs. And I think we have been very successful, uh, but we can still do better. Uh, the important thing is that identify the local people and then culture them with your philosophy and the corporate culture, and then trust them, and then you know, uh, delegate the power. So this, to me, is a key. So while we are in the US, we are trying to be a US company because it's mostly run by Americans. But when you go to other countries, like Thailand, we use uh, Thai, you know, uh, managers and engineers extensively. So these are sort of like, we're not complete yet, but I think this is a process of globalization and definition of globalization, in my opinion. Can I, can I there are quite a few questions to Toyota <laughs> company, so let me just uh, summarize a few things and ask uh, uh, Mr. Inaba about this. Um, first of all, uh, question is asking, what is the Toyota's outlook in China in light of the anti-Japanese sentiment there? And the other one about Korean cars, which are now becoming very popular in the US, and how do you see this competition? Okay. First of all, China, as you all know that, I don't have to explain the background, uh, but the fact is that it is the biggest uh, market. You know, last year they sold almost 20 million vehicles. And we have a smaller portion of it. Our attitude toward China is that you know, this political conflict will not go away for a long time to come. But we ought to be there. And let me say it is a cautious optimism, <coughs> hoping that for the best, but still cautiously. But we are investing quite a bit of uh, money in China. We have a capacity probably, I mean, this year we are trying to sell about uh, 1.5 million if things go normal uh, as compared to 2.3 in the US. So it's a sizable market. You can't just you know, neglect that. So we'll be very uh, vigorously looking at the opportunities. Uh, talking about Koreans, uh, I think it is a very, I mean, I'm very impressed with the progress that Koreans made. And, uh, but just like what's happening in the electronic industry, which was mentioned earlier on, that they are now taking over. 
we would not like to make that happen. <laughs> and uh, of course, so far, they are benchmarking us mostly. And they catch up with the quality and the design and everything. But it is still a halfway. And then we are, cautious, I mean, very attentively looking at how Korean is doing. The only weakness they are, they have today, is that they are expanding too fast, too wide. And they are in South America, they are in Russia, they are in China, they are in Eastern Europe, they are, they are in Africa, everywhere. I think if I were Koreans, I would you know, uh, advise them that go slowly, but very, very steadily. So these are sort of you know, things that I would like to give as advice to. Thank you. Two more questions, so it's still to Toyota. Toyota? Which is, yeah. <laughs> and one of it is a little out of my, my kind of expertise, so I might not be saying it right. But regarding the technology, telematics is the key to change in, change in the market of automobile industry. What is your priority of telematics for the US market? It is, OK. Uh, obviously, it is a very, very important. It changed the whole picture of uh, uh, life, that car is a part of connection to any outside world. So we have been investing a lot of money, but also forming a st strategic alliances with, with uh, Microsoft and many other companies, Salesforce.com and all these other. So we are trying to be a ahead of the game, and we actually believe we are, but it is still a long way to go. And uh, so uh, we are putting a lot of emphasis on this you know, front. Okay, well, one question on TPP. Uh, the question is how actively involved is Toyota or but other Japanese companies in the TPP negotiations in terms of its input to the Japanese or US government? Is there any inside information that we can gather from you? <laughs> okay, let me finish and done. Uh, as I said, that you know, uh, since we are meeting already all the local uh, content requirements and also uh, Japanese imp imports to United States tariff was only 2.5 percent, whereas Japan has no zero percent. So to me, this tariff reduction and all the other things at TPP is not directing our way of business today. So I don't believe we have any special uh, sort of connection with a, you know, it's all about government. And so we are just quietly watching how it goes. And of course, free trade is always good things. One thing is that, you know, US can be a very great export hub. So, you know, besides Japan, you know, which 50, you know, 50 percent of their production goes abroad, we like to make it happen. So we like to increase our export uh, from the United States. <coughs> any, any insights? Well, yeah. our company uh, is not really the initiated that the, the move than TPP, though. But there is certainly that there is our companies, uh, global companies, trading company, and certainly that we have a we recognize some more the positive and the benefit from the from the TPP once it's settled. Particularly not from the, you know, the short uh, term, but it's a, it's a long term because you know, we believe that the TPP certainly uh, promote that, you know, the, the, the trade between the countries. So I think that, you know, that's that <coughs> our position is. It seems to me that the TPP is not uh, pure economical issues, but uh, some political issues. And I'm not in a position to talk about politics. But for in general, to be honest, for the Japanese companies, for the Japanese enterprises, TPP will help the enterprises' activities, uh, without doubt. But uh, there are many arguments, as Mr. Kimura mentioned. Uh, I personally, I personally, uh, as a businessman, I support the TPP. But as a Japanese individual, 50-50 or <laughs> in the middle. Thank you. 
Now I would like to talk, uh, ask a few questions about the, the companies, uh, these companies, the Japanese companies in the United States. One of the questions was as, uh, is asking about uh, this interest, the interesting discussion we had about women, womanomics, which is that part of the abenomics try to use more women, you know, promoting women in the workforce. And the question asks, is there any uh, specific strategy that your company has, uh, has to promote and recruit uh, women locally in the United States? Mm. Well, <laughs> I think this is discussed in a broader term of uh, diversity. And we have been engaged in a diversity program uh, in every facet of our business, including our managers and employees. Of course, we have, uh, we have you know, completely sort of achieving every year's target of uh, number of uh, diversity leaders, including African American, Hispanic, and you know, uh, Native Indian, you know, Americans, and all these. Uh, we are also targeting our our sort of purchasing, our recruit, I mean, uh, purchasing policy, buying more from a diversity companies. And uh, women is a very, very important element of, of our management now. So I, I don't have the uh, concrete number, you know, but uh, we are always targeting each and every item that we, do, we like to achieve here in America. But Japan is very much behind it. I have to accept that. So my simple answer is no. We have no uh, specific program to enhance the employment of women. But so in the US, it's difficult to say men or women or how old or like that. So we, we employ uh, people by, by uh, capacity or ability or capability. That's it. I can't say any more. Sorry. In my small office, there are more ladies than men. <laughs> I don't think I have an issue. <laughs> but as a company, that I think that we are very uh, encouraged and also that, uh, to hire more the female employees uh, because of them, their uh, the experience, their talents, and their you know, the, the, uh, uh, capabilities going forward. So I think that, you know, the, um, that's probably that, you know, the most of the companies are going for, and we are one of them. Thank you very much. The other question is related to the immigration reform, but this is immigration reform in the United States, and its importance to the Japanese companies operating in the US. Is there any, any special uh, kind of comment on the immigration reform discussion that's going on in the United States in relation to your company's operation here? Um, in Los Angeles and uh, I mean Southern California, we have Mitsubishi Corporation has the, probably a little more than 20 subsidiaries and affiliate companies. And uh, lots of uh, the companies, they, they, well, the, for the particularly for the, uh, the factory, the uh, manufacturing, uh, the factory that you know, we employ. A, uh, many that you know the uh, Latino uh, people, so I think that you know we uh, we cannot hire the uh, illegal, illegal <laughs> of course. So I think that, you know, that in that sense that you know, this immigration reform is a uh, probably has some um, rich uh, relationship with that you know, our employee, particularly for the uh, the affiliate companies. Can I ask another question? This is now shifting a uh, question to Japan. A uh, uh, question asks, part of Abenomics is stimulating consumption through higher personal income in Japan. One aspect of this is wage increase. Do you expect wage increases uh, to happen this spring? This is talking about Japan now, <laughs> sorry. The professor knows better. <laughs> 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 But my amateur view, for that matter, is that for the first time after four or five years that they're talking about what they call bear, base out. So 
I think you know all the it is right in our beginning of this negotiation process called Shinto, and I think uh, Bear is one of the very very uh, critical element to increase the wages curve, uh, and uh, I think. Uh, Many Japanese companies uh, are becoming a little more receptive on this. So I'm hoping that this wage increase is going to be materialized in this uh, round of negotiation in April. I think it's uh, most likely that uh, wage will be increased at uh, large scale companies. I say a multi billion sales company like Toyota or Mitsubishi Electric, but uh, maybe at smaller size entities, it will be very tough to win. So the rate, as you saw in uh, Mr. Kimura's presentation, is quite low, unfortunately. Thank you. Um, I think we have maybe two more questions. W one question just came in was um, the question about Japanese corporations uh, as, uh, of corporations thinking about the patents or, or intellectual property, especially in countries such as uh, uh, Korea or China, uh, or uh, kind of compared to the situation in Korea or China. So what is the thing, your thinking about the protection of uh, and enforcement of patents and intellectual property rights? Well, I think it's, a, it's more it's increasingly, increasingly important that to protect that patent and software is because, uh, as uh, I kind of repeating again at my presentation, though, the, the hardware is like the products and uh, materials or even money is, of course, is important. But I think that the strength of the Japan or Japanese companies can provide to the world market <coughs> is that the more, the, like I said, the intangible assets, uh, software and know-how, and how that you know, so we can manage that you know, the company, the business. So I think that you know, the, in that terms that the how to protect that you know, the, those uh, the, uh, the, uh, the say software is, is very very important, particularly <coughs> towards in the future. It is really. Uh, very difficult to protect our intellectual property, particularly against China, in China. Uh, as you might know that uh, A company will have technology transfer agreement with B company China, then after the expiration, they claim this is our technology, I invented, like that. This happened in many places in China. So, uh, at, the, at our company in the headquarters in Tokyo, we are increasing the number of uh, attorneys at the intellectual property division, uh, and we will. I think we will continue to how to uh, strengthen the protection against uh, particular China business. Uh, I was, I'm saving this question for the last because this is really important. What is your prediction of U.S. economy, please? That was the last question. If you could start with uh, Mr. Inaba, thank you. Prediction, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think uh, we are very optimistic about USA. And when the uh, emerging country became so popular, and talking about India, China, Brazil, and some other countries too, we tend to, I mean, global view that we may tend to sort of forget about the stability and the size and everything of US. Because that was also during the time of recession uh, uh, that after the Lehman shock. But now, as we see more problems and issues and challenges in China and Russia and somewhere else, we all turn our eyes back to US. Yes, this is a country you can rely on, you know, most, and for the long future, especially population is growing, more diverse you know, society and all this. I think it's all pointing out that this is a great country to do business in, and uh, we are happy to be allowed to do the business. 
So I have the same opinion <laughs> as Mr. Inaba. <laughs> I see a very optimistic of the recovery of the economy and the future of the US. That's why we, we've been continuing investing, uh, facility investment and the investment uh, these days. So right after uh, our revenue, the companies, our revenue in the US uh, was the lowest in 2009. So right after the Lehman shock, but uh, this year we are focus expecting the experiencing 50% uh, increase over to 2009. Uh, so based on that performance, a good performance, we will we are plan still planning to invest more money in this market. I'm also very positive about the future of the U.S. Uh, one uh, the uh, reason is that the uh, shale gas revolution, what we call the, this, uh, the shale gas revolution is uh, impact not only energy sector, but also the other industries such as uh, the chemical industries, as probably most of the uh, audiences understand. The ethylene is, uh, is uh, um, so-called that you know, the, the chemical industries, basic materials. Base, uh, base, base uh, product. And uh, in the US, the trend is uh, produced from natural gas. While in other, country, in other countries, in the feedstock is the oil. So apparently, that, you know, this is the cheap and abundant natural gas will make that in the US, uh, the chemical industry is very, very competitive to the future. And uh, in other examples uh, in the finance world, that and uh, I have a conversation with it, uh, one of the subsidiary companies in which the financial advisors, they see that in the money chase that this, uh, well, money chases you know, the new opportunities there anyway, always. And this the shale gas revolution is not an exception at all. So uh, I, I think that there are some, uh, the, uh, uh, the substantial that the reason why that we believe that the, the, the economy is continuing uh, continuously uh, restoring and uh, improving. Thank you. On this uh, very positive note, I would like to uh, close this session. I, I think you would all agree with me when I say we got a lot of wonderful insights from these uh, three business people. And I would like uh, all of you to join me to thank all of the three for their uh, wonderful presentation. <laughs> Let's also thank Professor Katata. Thank you very much.